Well, so hi, hello and welcome to the Micro Hunter podcast. Uh, I'm Oliver here, Micro Hunter here, as uh, some people used to call me. And uh, I'm trying a new format. Um, yes, I, well, I've already published a podcast for um, yeah, a couple of years on and off, not on a very regular basis. I would like uh, to now um, also try to move this format into YouTube so you'll be able to listen to this uh, podcast both on my YouTube channel and uh, also on the podcast page of my website. And uh, yes, uh, podcasts uh, do allow me to talk a little bit more in depth uh, about a certain topic. And uh, today's topic um, is a little bit well, hypothetical, I would say. Um, I would like uh, to explore the question, what's going to happen? What would happen if all of a sudden, from one second to the next second, all microorganisms on the world were, were to disappear, gone? From one second to the next, they're gone? Um, what, what's going to happen? Um, and as a matter of fact, back in the 19th century, Louis Pasteur, the important, uh, famous French uh, um, biologist, microbiologist, uh, he actually said that um, if all microorganisms were to disappear, then this would be a disaster. I'm not paraphrasing. It would be a disaster for all living things and life on Earth uh, wouldn't uh, be possible um, as such. And, well, is he right about that? And I think, well, actually, he is right. And um, I've uh, found five items or five um, ideas, five points, uh, rather, how the lack of microorganisms would impact uh, um, our daily life. And, yeah, I think uh, it's a very hypothetical question, but because we already know um, the role that microorganisms play in, in our environment, for this reason, it's actually not so difficult even um, to deduce uh, the consequences. Yeah? So what I'm going to do now in this podcast, therefore, is in this podcast episode, is, is I'm going to go through uh, those five points and I'm going to tell you uh, my opinions um, um, about those. And uh, of course, uh, because uh, you're listening uh, to this audio um, podcast and because there is also a video version available on YouTube, I would like to invite you, of course, also to, to post comments yeah, in, uh, beneath uh, the video. Okay, so um, yeah, so if all uh, microbes suddenly were to disappear, um, yeah, then the consequences would be catastrophic. And the first thing is, is well, all of a sudden, without microorganisms, there would not be any decomposition. So microorganisms, uh, for example, bacteria and, and, and fungi, protozoans, yeah, those uh, microorganisms are, play an important role, a critical role in the breakdown of organic substances. So, for example, when you've got some dead organic matter, let's say, yeah, some leaves uh, that fell off a tree um, in autumn, um, next spring, um, you, if you look, uh, then the leaves are almost gone. So actually what happens uh, to those leaves over the winter time? Well, those microorganisms started to decompose uh, this organic material and release carbon dioxide. So essentially it uh, closes, to use a more biological term, uh, microorganisms, they close uh, the so-called carbon cycle and they're returning carbon in the form of carbon dioxide uh, back into the air. And uh, for example, um, if microorganisms were to be gone, all of a sudden what we would have is we would have a pileup um, of uh, organic material that is not broken down. Um, we can actually see something um, similar happening in regions uh, where it is um, freezing cold. Um, of course, microorganisms are present there as well, but because of the cold temperature, they are not able to as efficiently and effectively break break down the organic substances. Uh, so, for example, sewage water, wastewater, yeah, will not decompose quite as quickly. Yeah, and uh, this is, by the way, also one of the reasons why in some countries there are laws you are not allowed to use natural fertilizer basically sewage, right, to fertilize your fields uh, during, uh, during wintertime yeah, because the temperature is so cold that the microorganisms are not able to break down um, the, this organic material. So um, what we see is, is that uh, for all ma organic material that is created by plants, for example, yeah, leaves um, are formed uh, during spring and summertime. Um, basically, the plants grow, absorb carbon dioxide from the air by photosynthesis, and this carbon is again returned into the atmosphere um, after um, decomposition by those microorganisms. So this is a, a very, very critical um, role. And uh, just to imagine how many microorganisms there must be working to um, on the breakdown of this material is, yeah, essentially all of the the, the carbon that, that's made uh, by the uh, all of the carbon compounds, rather I should should say, um, the, all of the organic material that is made by plants by photosynthesis that yeah has to be returned 
return back again into the atmosphere sometime um, when, uh, yeah, for example, leaves are being shed during fall or when plants and animals die off. Yeah, it's going to re be returned into the atmosphere. Um, and uh, this is the work of microorganisms. So essentially, um, it would uh, lead, in one short word, to an ecological collapse. Okay, so this is uh, the first uh, point is the stop of decomposition um, yeah, and by, by microorganisms. Well, um, microorganisms, if they suddenly were to disappear, would also have a direct impact on our own life. Um, in the sense that uh, microorganisms, bacteria, help us digest food. So in um, our intestine, in our digestive system, um, there are countless uh, bacteria growing, and those bacteria produce enzymes that actually help us break down the food, but not only that, um, those bacteria will also um, produce uh, certain substances, like for example vitamins, that we humans actually need. Um, so it is not only a help in digestion, but also in uh, microorganisms, bacteria also enrich the food that we're eating, um, essentially by producing substances that the body needs. Now this is uh, particularly of importance, for example, with so-called ruminants, like cows, um, they basically eat only grass. It's a very once, actually a very one-sided diet, right? Uh, only grass and herbs and so on. Um, and uh, the, they have in their pansen, in their digestive system, it's called the pansen. What there are, there are many bacteria growing there, and they not only help digest the food. Um, the grass, but also they are actually important for enriching the food uh, by, by creating um, the vitamins and other substances that the animal, the cow, needs. Now, for the cow, it's definitely important. Now, um, But what about us humans? So what is going to happen if all of a sudden the bacteria um, in our human digestive system were to disappear? Well, actually, um, scientists did do experiments and they have created laboratory mice, which are completely free of bacteria. And uh, you need those uh, laboratory mice um, in order for certain scientific experiments. And they found out that those mice actually are able to survive as well. And uh, um, however, they're by far not able to digest the food as efficiently and as effectively. Um, so um, those mice did not were not always quite healthy, <laughs> but apparently it, it did work. Yeah, I'm not saying that this is uh, also going to work to an equal extent uh, with human beings uh, because um, um, actually the a proper uh, biome, as it's called, these are the bacteria growing on our body and in our body, the biome is or should be rather considered to be an essential part um, of our own body. So we should not separate the bacteria that are growing on and in us uh, from our own uh, body because actually we need them um, also as well. They're a part of the natural environment that we have. Um, um, so this separation is not a good idea because also those uh, bacteria that are actually growing on our skin um, will also prevent other more harmful bacteria. Um, to grow on our body. But then again, um, this is kind of avoiding a little bit uh, the question because, well, those other harmful bacteria wouldn't be present either. <laughs> so um, essentially, um, it's uh, doing experiments like this on a human being is, is, um, is of course, impossible um, to do. And uh, there are indeed uh, people, for example, who have uh, a very broken immune system and they have to breathe filtered air and they have to basically almost live in like in a space suit. Um, um, yeah, so to prevent other harmful bacteria from actually reaching them. But even those people um, will have, of course, bacteria growing in their, um, in their digestive system, right? Um, so it is not possible, um, at least to my knowledge, to, to create humans um, that are free of bacteria. And as a matter of fact, um, some people who um, are on an antibiotic treatment because they've got some infection and those antibiotics will actually sometimes also break, uh, destroy, damage, rather, the bacteria growing in the digestive system. So those people um, will actually swallow sometimes uh, some tablets that contain, contain bacteria, freeze-dried bacteria to rebuild uh, the bacterial flora of their in, um, digestive system. So in other words, um, yeah, um, I'm going off again a little bit here, um, but uh, the microbiome, as it's called, the, the, the bacteria growing on our body and in our body are an essential component um, yeah, of um, our existence um, and uh, essentially um, it helps us also to digest the food. Well, uh, let's move on a little bit. Um, I already mentioned the importance of, and it's the third point now, I already mentioned the importance of uh, microbes um, for for the ecosystem, for the carbon cycle, but uh, they also have uh, a direct importance for some plants because uh, plants uh, need uh, um, nitrogen compounds. And uh, even though the nitrogen in the air, N2, 70% um, of, of the air is, is, is nitrogen. That's, that's quite a lot, but it's in a form that plants are not able to use. 
Yeah, so there are um, bacteria in the ground uh, growing um, in, in the soil and also in association with the roots of the plant that are doing something that's called nitrogen fixation. And they're converting the nitrogen in the air um, into the nitrates um, that the plants need. Um, so it is uh, those bacteria, those microorganisms actually are acting like, like, like a natural fertilizer, so to say, by providing the essential nutrients the plants need for plant growth. And of course, if we were to remove those uh, bacteria, um, then this would lead to um, an agricultural collapse. As a matter of fact, um, it's a, a concept called crop rotation. Um, farmers know that if you uh, grow the same type of plant on one field um, for many years, um, it's going to, the field is going to, to lose nutrients uh, because those plants um, consume the nutrients. Of course, you can compensate that by, by spraying fertilizer over the field, but sometimes you don't want to do that, especially if you're an organic farmer. Um, you want to um, avoid the use of, of uh, these, uh, these uh, um, artificial fertilizers. So one well, a thing that you can do is, is you do have something called crop rotation. You start to grow plants um, on the field, um, with, and those plants have uh, those uh, bacteria, so-called the nitrogen-fixing bacteria, which will then enrich the soil again with, um, with nitrogen compounds, uh, which are acting like, like a fertilizer. Yeah? And then the next, the following year, you're able to grow again the, the, the plant that you intended to grow. Yeah? So this is uh, something uh, that um, essentially would have a direct impact, lack of microorganisms, um, also fungi, for example, and fungi in, 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 um, in are really critical for proper, for proper growth of trees, uh, some trees, and as a matter of fact, um, if you go microscopically and, and if you put a, a, a roots uh, of, a, of, a, of certain plants under the microscope, um, it's sometimes not even easily possible to see where does the root stop and where does the soil and the fungi, where do they start. It's so closely interconnected um, that it's um, even difficult to, to, to draw a line. Yeah? So the interdependency of, 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 of plants and, and the microorganisms is, is incredibly high. So making them disappear um, by whatever means, and this actually did happen. I mean, um, I remember um, yeah, not so much of an issue, um, luckily, as it used to be. There has been an improvement, but I remember back in the 1980s, 1990s, the whole topic about acid rain. It was a huge problem in some regions of the world. Still is a huge problem. Um, and the reason why this is a problem is because the acid, um, due to air pollution, so the acid in the rain actually causes a, a, a destruction of, um, of the microorganisms in the soil. And this had a direct impact um, also on, on, on plant growth. Yeah? So we actually know about many of these things from, from experience. So it's, it's actually not even that hypothetical. And as I initially mentioned, it's actually, there have been actual um, observations of this. Yeah? So the next thing here, okay. Um, yeah, when you say bacteria, microorganisms, there are usually some negative associations. People think, well, oh my gosh, these are diseases, right? They're mostly microorganisms are um, negatively connotated in the sense that people are associate them with diseases, pathogens, disease-causing um, bacteria, and so on. Um, but there are many of them that are actually very positive, not only in our own digestive system, as I mentioned, but also in other symbiotic relationships. So for example, you, you find uh, bacteria cooperating um, with, uh, in coral reefs, for example. Okay? Uh, so for example, they um, have a symbiotic relationships with algae. Um, yeah, for example, lichens. Um, those lichens are in a symbiotic relationship so of, um, con contain also bacteria and, and fungi. So the cooperation uh, between microorganisms is, is, can be very high. Um, and uh, to the extent uh, that it is not even possible to sometimes uh, separate them. You cannot really uh, see the, these things in, in isolation with each other, but the interdependency um, in, the, in, yeah, in the ecological system it can be extremely high. Yeah. And so if you remove, let's say, certain microorganisms, then, then yeah, also the host organism uh, might actually die. And you see this um, quite, uh, quite frequently in, in, in nature. And this can, of course, lead uh, to um, a collapse of, of a whole ecosystem. Yeah, and last but not least, uh, who would have guessed that uh, some microorganisms, like, for example, cyanobacteria, yeah, this, uh, um, actually fo uh, photosynthetic algae, um, they're green and they live uh, of, uh, in water, are responsible for significant uh, production um, of oxygen. Yeah, so um, kind of often, very often ignored. Um, yeah, we think, of course, plants produce oxygen and they do. They do. But um, also another large percentage of the world's oxygen is produced by those cyanobacteria, which are photosynthetic bacteria. So they're actually um, not plants. 
but bacteria that do photosynthesis um, and they will convert uh, the water uh, with the help of sunlight into oxygen. So if uh, those cyanobacteria were to disappear, of course, this would uh, immediately reduce the oxygen levels uh, on planet Earth and would have a direct impact uh, on, on animal life. So in summary, if, if microorganisms were to disappear, the impact would be yeah, definitely devastating. Um, luckily, this is uh, most likely not going to happen. And the reason is because microorganisms are extremely resilient. Um, essentially, if there is a problem and if uh, locally certain microorganisms were to die out, and this can indeed happen, I mean, let's look at a volcanic eruption and, uh, and fires and, 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 and so on, extreme heat is of course able um, to yeah, kill off all living things, including microorganisms, but look, uh, after a short time, <laughs> they will return. Yeah, and indeed, um, I did find a sixth uh, function of microorganisms, and this one is the most um, unique one of all of them. Uh, because scientists have found out that microorganisms, bacteria, can also be found in rain. Now, you're going to say that's nothing really special. Of course, uh, you're going to find them in rain. Uh, microorganisms um, can be found in air, and as the rain drop, drop falls um, essentially down, it is in contact with the air, and it will essentially any bacteria that are floating around in the air will be absorbed by the raindrop, and that's why there are bacteria um, in the rain, right? Um, as a matter of fact, <laughs> that's one of the reasons why or how rain is able to make the air clean. Um, it cleans away all of the dust particles, um, the smoke particles maybe even, um, that can be found in the air. Well, actually, that's not what I mean. The scientists found out that bacteria can play a very important role as serving as so-called condensation seeds for the raindrops. Now, what does this mean? If uh, the air is saturated with humidity, sometimes um, the raindrops have a problem forming because what they need is to need some kind of particles for the water to condense on. And uh, scientists found out that bacteria can actually um, yeah, play the role for water, um, for moisture to condense on and to form a raindrop. Uh, so bacteria um, can are therefore directly or can be directly responsible responsible for increasing the chance of, of, of rain formation because um, it acts uh, as a so-called a condensation seed. It's a fascinating, interesting, um, interesting topic. A little bit unexpected um, here, uh, but uh, there is actually research also that's uh, involved here, and that's uh, also the reason why in rain bacteria can be found. Okay, not only because the raindrops picked up. Uh, uh, bacteria um, from, from the air, but actually because uh, the bacteria are actually responsible for the formation of the raindrop itself. Well, yeah, you can see that the microorganisms play an incredibly important uh, role in, in, in our environment. Um, yeah, I just wanted to share some of those points with you. I'm sure that if you do a little bit of research, you're able to find many, many more um, items here. Um, but uh, I think for today, I'm going to leave it at that. Uh, please also do leave your comments behind um, how you like uh, this, uh, this new format. Uh, as always, I'm experimenting around um, with uh, new video formats and also new audio formats. And uh, give me your feedback a little bit. Of course, I would like to invite you to subscribe uh, to this uh, um, to this channel as well and to this podcast. Happy microbe hunting as always and see you around next time. Bye-bye.